Well, good evening, and I guess we can say truly good evening since it's been dark for a while again. But uh, uh, just a reminder as we get our meeting started today uh, of our vision is inspiring all learners to be engaged and successful. Our mission to provide an enriching environment to meet the needs of all learners and then our core values of respect, integrity, students first, and excellence. So as we go through the night, as we go through our agenda, please be very mindful of that as we do this. Um, I'd like to thank Kylie for filming tonight. Maybe we don't always give her credit, but she's here a lot of nights. Kylie Scow giving uh, filming this for us. It's given a lot of her time. So thank you, Kylie. Um, call the meeting to order. Um, looks like we have a quorum easily. Uh, we need a motion to approve the agenda, and no changes currently. Thank. I'll second. Thank you. Good. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Um, no hearing of delegates. And we're going to move right into the best dress group we have here tonight, the most professional dress group we have tonight. Uh, our local, our, our current Al Algona FFA members just recently returned from the National Convention and are going to give us an update from that. Well, thank you for giving us the opportunity to travel to Indianapolis and then to report back to you folks of what we uh, saw, what we did, and what we're bringing back to our community. Um, Going forward, we traveled out to with uh, Director General uh, Escobo and Delson of Grimes, Indianapolis. It was a 12 hour trip, and so it was uh, it was uh, something that uh, you kind of forget about how kind of long that can be. But uh, by the time you get out there, it's a lot of fun. We left Tuesday morning and returned uh, about 4 a.m. on Saturday, October 30th. So I'm going to turn it over to the students now, and then I'll wrap it up with them. Our first tour when we got out to Indianapolis was the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We had an opportunity to take a lap around the track, and it's a two and a half mile track right outside Indianapolis. And we got to climb in uh, a car when we got into the uh, museum. Um, each of the, one thing we learned was each of the turns of the track is banked exactly nine degrees, 12 minutes. And it's the exact same dimensions as it was when it opened in 1909. We got the opportunity to uh, stand by the Art of Bricks and kiss the bricks, which is a really cool opportunity because that's a really famous site if you watch any racing. And uh, we also got to tour the museum and uh, check out all the cool cars they had in there from the history of the track and cars that had won at the track and see the, the trophy they had in there too and just learn more about that. It was a really awesome experience because I love racing. And uh, then after that, we headed to the convention. Maybe before you leave, can you give us your name? Oh, I'm Hunter Togis. I'm okay. a senior here at Algona. Okay, thank you. I'm Kayla Busher. I'm a freshman. And at the opening session at the convention, uh, they, set, they featured Courtney Peacock. She was their main speaker. Uh, some of her key points were that uh, the only person that has to believe in you is yourself. Uh, never like just walk out. Keep your head held high all the time. She also said to make your mess your message. Don't like forgive for your mistakes. Just learn from them. She also was saying that uh, you shouldn't don't confuse your intermission for your finale. So just don't like think it's your final step. You can always move further. Uh, the success of what she's had is because she was born and raised in agriculture. People tried to change her, but she didn't take their words for anything. And the FFA officers, they really stressed back together better than ever. It was really good to be back after COVID hit. It was a really good thing to be back. I'm Connor Olmstead. I am a senior this year and I'm the treasurer of the FFA chapter. Um, so the National Chapter Award Program is uh, designed to recognize chapters that um, actively implement certain goals and attributes throughout the organization. And, uh, out of the 250 chapters in the state of Iowa, we were ranked 25th. So um, basically, the officer team will have a retreat in the summer sometime, usually late July. Uh, but all of our activities that we've had throughout the previous year and to set different goals and how they affected our community and we write a bunch of different like essay type questions for it and 
then we submit it to the state and we'll give it the ranking on that. So we got uh, 25th out of 250, and at the national convention, we um, got a two-star award, and Nick and Christensen went up on the stage for a speech this time. Thank you. So the workshop us four guys went to was called Your Ag Literacy Toolbox. It was all about advocating for agriculture. It was presented by the Farm Bureau, and what they really pushed on was getting involved in your community and putting it out on social media and going to the younger schools and trying to get as many people involved and interested and educated about agriculture as you could. I'm Nick Christensen. I'm the Sentinel here for the chapter, and I'm senior. My name is Jordan Busher. I'm a senior here at Algona High School. Um, another workshop that we went and attended was Tools and Tactics to Creating a Thriving Small Business. Um, in that workshop, we basically learned about knowing your community, knowing your product and who to sell to, building up a good network of people who are going to know what you have and are willing to buy. It was a great workshop to learn if you have a small business, maybe you're selling animals or products, you make something. It was a great for learning about how to do that. Um, one other tour we went on, um, it was the last tour we went on before we returned home, was um, to Hunter's Bee Farm. Um, there we got to learn about uh, bee farming, what they do, all their byproducts they use, they use beeswax for a lot of stuff, um, honey was the big one too. We had a lot of fun going there, learning about all the different things that bees could be used for. A lot of it I didn't know, my mind just goes straight to honey, but there's a lot of other uses for bees and their byproducts. We went and got to tour them and got to see some live bees, and Mrs. Becker even got to hold um, some bees from the hive. Hello, I'm Olivia Clintus, and I'm a freshman. And I was able to um, explore the career fair that was there, and this was a great chance to explore all the different college options that were there. I was able to talk to several colleges and gave and they gave me their knowledge about what it, what their school had to offer. It was such an amazing experience and I and it really let me think about the future that I would like to have. So next year the, the 95th National FFA Convention will be held in, in downtown Indianapolis again. Um, it will be October 26th to the 29th. Um, it, it, it should be a really good chance for the students to go back. Some comments that I received about our students while we're out there. Talk about rides. Um, every time they got off the bus, they thanked the bus driver, you know, just for being there, for doing his job, but they were really appreciative of, of everything that was given to them. Uh, other advisors on our bus noted that. Uh, they go, your kids always say it. 
they'll say thank you. They go, could they talk to our students? Uh, I go, it's just the way that they, they do things. Um, we're really proud of what they do. Um, doing a, being in the right place at the right time. Um, when you know, there was 50 some thousand other students uh, and, and adults out there, but they were always where they needed to be, when they needed to be, and, and, and going to the workshops. The workshops weren't always easy to get in. We had to get there early for some of them. They reduced the quantity this year, and they reduced uh, the number that they allowed in. So um, they really did well getting in and, and making it to six different workshops in the two and a half days that we were actually in there. You can uh, bounce this line. Uh, one more. Uh, some things that have gone on this year uh, in the last 12 months, uh, starting in April of last year, we really had a chance to start doing things relatively normal again. Uh, we attended the Iowa FFA Leadership Conference in April. We had 11 FFA Iowa degree recipients. We have been averaging somewhere between four and six. Uh, so that's, that's an incredible number this year. We uh, had a couple of students that took the freshman quiz. Uh, Reed Luaji finished uh, sixth in the state. Morgan Kelly was 16th. And that was out of about 270 people that took the freshman quiz. And it's only for uh, ninth grade students. So they did really, really well. Uh, we had two uh, events qualify for the state uh, from the sub-district, district, and then the state. We had Ellie Luaji, who re uh, earned a, silver, uh, a bronze at, uh, for her job interview. And then uh, Jordan Busher earned a silver for his ag broadcasting and, uh, and it did really well with that. Our team ag sales team finished 10th place down there. I suppose there was like 35 teams that, that took that. And our farm business management uh, team were just silver. I think they were like 16 out of, again, like 40 teams. So they did really well. Um, we participated in the Kasut County Fair this summer, the Iowa State Fair in August, Clay County Fair in September, all returning back to normal, which is really great. Uh, we did the Austin Barrow Show after school started up. Uh, we've done, we did district soils and finished second at district. We went to state, uh, and that team finished seventh in the state, which, if you knew how close it was, they were five, four points from qualifying for the national event. And so they did really well. Uh, the competition was exceedingly tough down there, and, and they're, they're really great. We've got uh, some leadership conferences coming up in November and January. Uh, I don't know that we'll have anybody attend in November, but we're hopeful to have some uh, students attend in January. Then we'll have our winter livestock judging contest, Iowa Port Congress, and then we'll be uh, possibly leaving the state again and, and uh, the Sioux Empire, which is five different breeds, and then uh, the, the Beef Expo is a possibility. Again, we really don't uh, take for granted of being able to meet in person anymore. We truly appreciate you allowing me to take students out of, out of the school and missing several days at a time. This was four days. Um, I think the critical thinking skills that these students earn while on these trips, um, their um, leadership development um, activities do set them to be above their peers uh, in future. I've talked to students when they've gone off to college and said, you know, I didn't realize how well prepared I was for college until I got there and, and, and did some events. And so um, with that, our last slide says, you know, uh, oh, excuse me, landscaping project, the gateway project. We have been landscaping around here, and uh, we got about two-thirds of the way done on last Thursday. We ran out of time. Tomorrow we'll be finishing the project. If there's one more slide. And so that's, that's kind of what they look like there. Um, we will we'll be finishing on the north side. Hopefully they'll get it sited tomorrow before we plan. Um, we'll do the north side of the gateway entrance, and then we'll do the south uh, last third on that, and then we'll have it, uh, we'll put some uh, mulch in, probably, if we don't get it done this fall, we'll put it in next spring and, and get that uh, dressed up. Should be one more slide. This is the last that I have for you guys. This, this kind of talks about um, where the rubber meets the road. These are records the students have put together thus far for 2021. Um, we have 101 projects, that's about 1.2 projects per student. Um, we, they've journaled almost 7,200 hours thus far this year. Um, the really neat thing is, is the SAE income thus far is about $59,000 that these kids have uh, invested and or earned. And the economic impact to the community is nearly $62,000, $61,968. So these kids are giving back to the community both in volunteer time as well as um, uh, earning projects, earning paychecks, um, unpaid hours, 
lot of these students aren't paid at home. They, 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 they get other things from their parents or, or where they work, so that they, they get unpaid hours. And so to have this accumulated at almost 7,200 hours journaled before the end of the year is pretty impressive for these kids. I know we'll exceed next year's, uh, last year's numbers, but uh, I just wanted you guys to have an idea of what sort of benefit these kids are doing as 14 to 18 year olds. And there are some that will be going for their American degree. Hopefully this, this next year we've got four or five that are out of school members that are, are on pace to, uh, to earn their American degree, which is the highest one degree that the FFA bestows. What questions do you have for myself or my students? Why is it Indianapolis every year? Why is it Indianapolis every year? You know, that's a great question, Dr. Owens. I wish I could tell you that, but it's going to be there for the next 12 years. <laughs> um, I, I think I, I think they, they put a bid together. Um, it had been alternating between Louisville and Indianapolis. I really like Louisville. There's some really great tours down there. Uh, but that's where, that's where they bid it. That's where it comes back. Um, years ago, back in the day, it was down in Kansas City. I think we've outgrown Kansas City, but there's some that want to move it to like Texas or California. I would not be a fan of that. It would, it would reduce the number of students we could take. So. How many of you guys have been to more than one? How many have you been to? Two. Three. Three. Two. Two. Have yes, you been to Indianapolis every time? Yep. Last year you guys went to the speed race too, right? Um, no, no, this is the first time they've gone to the Speedway. We've gone before, but I try and alternate it up so that way they don't see the same thing every year. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I understand. How many states were represented? All 50? Yeah, all 50 were there. Yeah. It, which was really kind of cool on that first session. Is that where they did the, the flags? They, they, they showed the flags of, of the state. They showed how many chapters they have, how many members they have. And, uh, and it was, it was kind of cool. There was a few states where we actually had more members than their state did, our chapter alone, which is kind of, I don't know if that's good or bad, but we kind of thought it was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, all states are represented, including Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Washington, D.C. So how many students are in your program? How many students are in my program? Uh, I see 75 uh, every other day, and I have 92, 93, uh, including high school members that are still active, either they could pursue their American degree, they're still showing, um, or something like that. What sort of SAE, SAE projects are there? SAE projects, there are um, six different types. They can either have a placement, a, um, an ownership, they can have a research project, they can have a community service type. We did that a couple years ago. We had a couple students that ran a uh, Meals from the Heartland packaging event where we did uh, about 70,000 70, meals we packaged out of here. We raised the funds for it and packaged it. And so, and then uh, agri-science research is the other one. So there's some, some of them, uh, just raise your hands if you have an SAE placement, all right? How many have an ownership of animals, all right? How many of you have um, basically unpaid time? <laughs> so it, it's all over the board with these kids. And uh, uh, the record keeping is really important to me because that's one of those uh, employability skills that they can take with them down the road and, and keep better track of their records for taxes purposes, for banking purposes, and just knowing where they are in life. Thank you. Thank you for your support. <laughs> All right, well, we'll kind of move on then. Uh, our next item on the agenda is the consent items. You should have received those in your packet. Um, Jay, did you get a chance to look at invoices? Yes. All good, I assume? Yes. In order? All right, good. Um, any questions? There was one check that didn't make it onto the list, which was for Mason City School for the Educare program. Okay. And that was $157.76. I had a question on the um, an invoice from Ingenuity uh, for a virtual tutor. Yep. That program. Ingenuity is the program we use in our TNT program and in our at risk program. 
Um, Mr. Cecil, that might be a good uh, good one for you. Is it anything more to that? It's, it is the software program that's used for at risk. Okay. Um, to approve consent items. I do a motion to approve the consent items. Thank you, Tom. Do you have a second? Second. All right. And here we have a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, next is our superintendent report, but did you want to um, after, you go after we, you? We can just do it. We'll do it this way. Okay. 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 We'll go superintendent report. Uh, you know, starting with certified enrollment, uh, certified enrollment you know, is October 1 is our count day, but you actually certify on October 15th, um, and I think we talked during the October board meeting. There's some cleanup uh, that goes on in those two weeks um, where students might be duplicated from one district to, uh, to, to another, and uh, Mary Beth works hard and gets all those uh, uh, to where they are here. So our certified enrollment, actually a typo there, our certified enrollment is up to 19. Our resident students attending our school is up 31. Our, our certified, our actual enrollment's up, up 19. And then our total school-aged kids is up 46. You know, a lot of different numbers. Uh, th this nine, being up 19, that's the one that we're funded on. That's our per pupil uh, funded. So that's, that's, that's great. That, that's as good as we can, you know, we can uh, uh, ever hope for. You know, we, we talk in a, in a rural district, if we don't decline, that's, that's a positive for us, and this is beyond that. Uh, I presented this to our advisory council uh, two weeks ago, and they asked where, you know, why is it up? And that's a really good question. Um, and we, we take a look administratively at our, at our buildings and our grade levels where it is, and it's, you know, we had 43 students in the middle school who, who were new to the district. So that's, that's a lot of it. Our preschool, you can see, is up three. That's actually six kids because preschool are funded at half. So preschool was up slightly. Uh, we did have a, you know, our, our graduating class was slightly under 100, I think, last year. Um, you know, so what we have in kindergarten is similar to that. So it's, it's kind of a push as kids coming in and kids going out. We just had an influx of people into the district. Um, our open enroll in is up 18. You can see that. And our open enroll out is down, you know, which we, we count that as a net gain as well when you're looking at enrollment. So all of those together uh, resulted in a very, very positive certified enrollment uh, for us, which is this creates our funding for next year, these numbers here. I put in there just a little bit uh, of um, Iowa State general fund and how that affects education, some of that information. Um, the, the state of Iowa had a $1.2 billion surplus, which was higher than what the, the estimate uh, was going to be. Uh, that surplus goes a number of different places, including um, into some cash reserves, into some taxpayer relief. Um, but then there's still another $200 million in surplus that goes to the state general fund, which is how we're funded in education. The pandemic impact on SSA uh, last year, you know, we had, less, we had less kids attending schools last year, around 6,000 less. How does that impact us now is those kids are going to come back. Uh, so it, it, we have to pay, you know, the, the money towards education is going to go up just simply because there's more students to really get us back to zero. So in a year where we have a surplus, it's probably a good thing because there, it is going to cost more to educate uh, at the same level than it did the previous year. And that's before we start to talk about an SSA increase. Um, so that'll be something for us to um, could continue to talk with our legislators about it. And they know that. They know that. That's, that's part of why um, they were conservative last year. Um, talk a little bit about that 250 million is what some people are estimating to get us back to zero you know certainly we want uh, an SSA around you know three percent or more um, we've been uh, two three last year 
about an average of 2% for the last 10 years in the state of Iowa. A little bit of a financial review, um, and I'm going to use this spreadsheet a little bit to you know, talk about uh, some of these things uh, you know, with you guys. This is looking uh, you know, not only back at last year, but also a forecast into our, you know, the next five years. You know, big thing here, uh, right here on this line, this is our surplus and deficit for the year. So FY 19, 20, and 21, we operated with a surplus, which, which is great. Three years in a row we've done that. There, there were adjustments made in our, in our expenditures, um, different things that we did to help that. Uh, you can see we were op operating with a small deficit prior to that. We are anticipating a surplus at the end of this year. You can see that number is really big, and that's because of the ESSER funds that we're going to spend over a two-year time period. Well, those, those funds are, are built into our model already. We don't actually have the dollars, but they are built into our, our model already. So even though this is a really big number for a surplus, we are you're going to spend that, so that, that goes down. So as we move ahead and we look at our projections, so this is going for this year's budget year out to FY27. A couple things for us to, to look at in here is that this surplus goes, goes down. The ESSER dollars get spent out. This is also a large surplus, but uh, we don't have all of our ESSER funds, the 1.4 million budgeted yet. So some of that will decrease uh, with with those funds. So if you look at the the change FY23, so this is next school year, our revenue is expected to be about 191 and then it goes down to 188. Uh, Part of the you know what what starts to happen is we don't have the ESSER dollars anymore. Also what starts to happen is in our models we've taken out the cash reserve. Can you explain what ESSER dollars are? Can you explain yep. what Yep, ESSER dollars, uh, the emergency secondary school um, relief, it's, it's the COVID dollars that come from the federal government. Uh, those dollars are all given to the state, and then the state uh, sends those to the school. We get that in reimbursement form. Uh, we, don't, we didn't have $1.4 million sent to us in cash, so Mary Beth every quarter goes in and claims those dollars for um, interventionists at Bertha Godfrey, interventionists at Bryan Elementary, interventionists at uh, Lucia Wallace, our um, mental health therapist, our youth, you know, all those positions we added with those, with those dollars, um, as well as there's some curriculum additions as well. So those are federal dollars that we have that have to be spent in a two-year time period. This is year one, next year is year two. That's a good question. So our revenue does drop, like we said, after FY23. Uh, that's when we'll not have ESSER dollars. Our, our revenue drops again from FY24 to FY25. That's when we no longer receive sharing dollars from um, Laverne. Okay, so the, these, are, these are expected drops in revenue. You know, so we, we, we see these coming. We know it's going to happen. We want to show you what the model looks like. So we've had our ESSER dollars come out. We took our cash reserve tax, which is about 900000 I took all of that out in the model, and we took our sharing dollars out. So and you, the, sorry, the, is that the uh, employment? Uh, yep, joint know, employment. Now, isn't there an incentive after you They are, you but, but I, I don't build those in until, okay. we, until we get to that point. Gotcha. So we receive .10 times our certified enrollment minus special education, um, which it's about $700,000 is what it is. So we'll receive that for, for three years. If you reorganize, we will receive it for three additional years, but I don't have that built into the model. Okay. So what does that do? So this is uh, uh, an SSA increase of 2%, of um, taxable valuation um, change of 3%, keeping the same special education deficit at 800,000 although we actually operated less than that so you know really we're we're very uh, aggressive in our expenditures and conservative in our revenues in these models 
and what it does is our our fund balance you know actually grows from this year to five years from now now you can see that we do operate at a deficit here three years in a row um, but but we should you know, that's okay that's an okay thing we have the fund to do that at that time so that's a healthy thing that that's happening and that will cut into our it was uh, it will cut into our spending authority it'll cut into our our fund balances and our, our UAB but it's we have the balance to do that so that should happen so we have the money to spend we should spend it and then you know it will need to balance ourselves once again so I talked about those assumptions um, we, we build all those assumptions in like I said a 2% SSA and we, we hope our it's higher than that okay but we don't know um, enrollment wise not increasing not decreasing either but not increasing keeping it flat uh, the same special education um, the addition of a, a possible administrator um, those those teachers that we've added with ESSER money taking those those teachers out uh, benefits increasing at 5% per year we hope that doesn't happen and salary increases 2% per year is what has built this model factors that are not included uh, Todd brought up one um, continued sharing dollars and then also uh, reorganization which adds per pupil those those per pupil dollars aren't in this as well so there's a couple different measurables that we we think we see but we don't add them in until they happen and we're and we're very balanced with those assumptions Any questions on some of those finances and those numbers? It's, it's important, I think, that um, you know, I, I want you guys to look into the future with me. I, I want to give you, the, you guys the numbers um, of the outlook of our district financially as, as well as where we are currently. Things look very, very good. Uh, increased enrollment this year certainly helps that um, and we're we're very stable and that that's a good thing so and I know, I know we don't have certain things built in here right fair enough if you look at 25 when we're starting to see a deficit right yep. uh, and, operating in a deficit on that year yeah yeah from between our revenue and expenditures right yep that apparently continues to kind of carry out and grow correct looks like. so let's say you know the things don't come to fruition and this is our reality sure i'm assuming then we have to start making or having some conversations about how we yeah we would not need to we would not need to change expenditures we would change revenues uh, i took all of the cash reserve out after 2023 um, that's that's revenues we have in right now we have to take it out because we're too solvent so as you take away this fund balance you could you could have that cash back in to answer I think that's what you're where you're getting to okay. is how do so we balance this thing back out right. the yeah. simple thing is put the cash reserve back in that's one way to do it I know that would be increasing revenues another way would be to decrease expenditures um, you could do that in uh, some ways that maybe tough, yeah that's tough maybe retirement does some of those things naturally for us um, so there's a couple different methods for us to once again balance that. You would not need to make any adjustments until after FY27, though. And I would say maybe even a year or so beyond that. So we, we're looking a long time before we'd need to make an adjustment from our current expenditures. So where do we take the, the, the money we take out of cash? Where is that going? Or are we going to reduce tax rate? Yeah, it's a good question, Jay. I, for this, I haven't done that. I just have simply taken it out. Um, I would say probably immediately into management. And we spend 100% of our management every year. Um, so making that a safer place to prepare for an early retirement, you know, that, that's one place. There's probably some other um, ways we could look at it or release relief, uh, taxpayer relief and you know, lower tax rates. It's still a very healthy, when you think about it, 
28 to 27 percent fund balance and the five-year projection is still very healthy yeah so, so, so there's no immediate concern and the overspending is not multiplying it's a one-year overspending the next year overspending about the same number of dollars right so it's not an emergency right now it's strictly so this this number cheap. right here is what Tom's looking at so when we're predicting we're going to end the year at 28 percent in our uh, um, you know, as, as our UAB, and in five years from now, it'll be 27. So we're really, we're not losing anything. That's good. And, and the, you're right. Typically what happens when you're in bad shape is this 300 is 600 here, and 1.2, and then we have big problems. Yeah. And we don't have that happening. Well, we appreciate the transparency and yep. as we continue to work through it. Uh, last thing in our, our report today, um, we had a biology field day a couple weeks ago that Todd had the opportunity to attend, and Todd's going to talk a little bit about that that day. Well, I just wanted to, uh, I had the opportunity to chaperone the uh, biology field day held out at Wild Haven, um, just down by the swimming pool. And I wanted to take uh, just a minute to kind of recognize a few people publicly um, for this event, because... Uh, uh, first of all, Mr. Young and, uh, is a biology teacher at Algona High School, and then Mr. Bodie. It's a collaboration, as, as at Bishop Garrigan, it's kind of a collaboration between the two school districts. And um, we started out the day with a presentation from the National Eagle Center, and uh, it was very interesting. Then we went around to some different stations, very uh, hands-on, um, interactive stations. And um, for instance, one uh, former Algona High graduate, T.J. Herrick, gave a presentation about chronic wasting disease. Um, and he actually had deer heads there, and the kids helped him, I think, dissect some glands or something. You know, he demonstrated how they test for this and stuff. And I thought a lot of the, a lot of kids would be turned around, but they, they were all very attentive and attentive. And then uh, they had the uh, naturalist from the Mitchell County um, Conservation give a presentation about wild edibles. Uh, I didn't know that itch weed is, can be eaten as a lettuce salad. Um, and she talked about some fungus, one of them was, which is a chicken of the woods. And lo and behold, a couple weeks after this, I'd never heard of chicken of the woods. I went to an Isaac Walton potluck, and Ron Beatty had cooked chicken of the woods, so I was able to eat some chicken of the woods. So it, uh, you know, just a, a lot of really good um, interactive stations that, that the kids went to. And then a couple, um, uh, I want to recognize Smithfield Foods. Uh, they, they provided the staff to cook, and they provided our, our meal for the day. They uh, cooked some pork loin, and it was awesome. And, uh, and then the rest of it was, I think a lot of it was catered by Hy-Vee, but a uh, very good meal, but thanks to Smithfield Foods for that. And last but not least, I want to recognize that Donald Teats um, Foundation. Uh, they kind of spearheaded this thing, and, and I had a convert, uh, an opportunity to speak with Don a little bit, and, you know, and, and a couple of board members about, you know, they've got the pieces in place here that for this foundation is going to have a lasting impact on this community for a long, long time. And, and so I just wanted to, thanks for a minute, just to recognize yeah. Uh, yeah. a couple of our area, you know, community teachers and uh, a couple of the businesses and, and, and people in town. So w Wonderful event. I got to attend a couple years ago. Mrs. Eichen got to go this year. Wonderful event. A fabulous opportunity for our kids. And uh, we're really lucky that we have that collaboration with, with them. Okay, um, anything else under the report? No. Nope. Any other questions? All right, we'll move on to administrative report. And we have Mr. Cecil with us here tonight. Talk to us a little about high school professional development. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we appreciate the ability to have <coughs> professional development. A uh, shift in our calendar this year as we've gone to uh, back, probably to an old model. Um, a full day professional development. I would say staff and student feedback for full day versus our early outs has been overwhelmingly popular. Um, it provides a more consistent schedule in our in our weeks for the students. Um, certainly provides uh, an ability to get a little deeper into some things when we put in put in a full day uh, on on those topics. We have three mer uh, major areas of focus this year. Uh, the first one is tier one instruction. 
So in education, a lot of times, tier one, tier two, tier three, if you picture a pyramid, you know, tier one instruction really effective for 80% uh, of our students. Um, when that isn't working, we need a little more intense instruction. That would be our tier two and then, and then higher up to, to tier three. So tier one is really foundational uh, instruction, uh, but it's, it's never out of style. It's never out of need for reform. <coughs> it is the, the basic items. Um, some topics we've hit on, and, and Jamie Eichen, our director of teaching and learning, and Kayla Jacobson, our high school instructional coach, have led kind of that segment of it. Um, but really, the beginning, middle, and end of any class, which doesn't sound overly complicated, uh, all brain research, though, says we remember the most about the beginning, and the second most about the end, uh, and then the third most about everything in between. Um, so, really, working on those intro pieces powerful and impactful to start making the connections. And again, we're talking about teenage brains that aren't developed yet, so trying to, to ignite that. Um, same thing with a, a ending that's got some optimal closure we talked about. But then in the middle, keeping it engaging. Um, recent study on, on attention span is that uh, humans were down to about eight seconds um, in some studies on attention span. So really trying to keep things active for point of reference, goldfish, <coughs> nine second attention span. I don't know how they test that, but that's, that's some bleeding research out there. Um, so really working on, on keeping the attention. And we know our kids live in a different world um, than, than we grew up in. We know how many times they can swipe their phone in a minute. Um, and so trying to, to keep our classrooms engaging um, at tier one instruction is really important. Uh, and that's some specifics on the pacing uh, and planning for a block schedule. Um, what's good in 40 minutes is good in 80 minutes and, and vice versa, uh, but a little more uh, maybe some planning pieces, like I said, pacing. So that was our first one. Um, our second item is restorative mindset. This is some work we've been doing for a few years now. Uh, Maria Lance is one of our, our people we partner with. Uh, she brings in a lot of instruction on restorative practices for us. We also have two restorative leads this year at the high school, part of the TLC package, also with uh, Nick Keeker and Andy Spear. Uh, they've done a nice job taking some of the items that Maria uh, brings to us on some of those full day PDs and then distributing it out in our advisory uh, program. It is uh, a lot of relationship work, and it is important work in there. Uh, and it's also a shift. So when we talk restorative mindset, it's a shift from punitive discipline um, to a little more of a restorative discipline on the, on the other end of it. Um, and I, I'd like to talk about it because I do get pushback. I get pushback from, from staff. I get pushback from parents. Uh, I had a parent the other day say uh, they wish when their kid came to school we would take all 450 cell phones away from their kids. Um, I jokingly said, well, I wish as parents you keep those all at home on your own, <laughs> on your own time. Uh, but we do want to use them for for good, of course. So we like that they're here. We've got to try and teach them how to be, be responsible with it. But uh, in that pushback, when I hear things like what was good enough for us or well, didn't this work uh, when I was a kid? Uh, and, and true, plenty of it did. Um, rotary phones worked. Um, my home phone number ended in a zero, and I think I messed up the zero the most times. And you know the pain of messing up the zero that you wouldn't always go all the way around. Um, flip phones also worked. Those are now not uh, reality. So the whole it worked and was it good enough, um, there's a lot of things and a lot of examples in, in all in the modern business areas that, that it worked once upon a time. Um, bottom line, we know more about how students learn than we have before. And, and we talk often that if we know better, then we ought to do better. Um, not, just, not just opinions, we've worked some data into these conversations. Um, conditions for learning is a survey we take each year. Um, so we pulled a couple of things specifically from there to check and see how this restorative mindset and restorative practices um, resonate with our, our students. Uh, because we know that when things are different and we don't understand something, we often judge it. I don't know about you guys, but if I don't know something or understand it, I judge it. I usually don't judge it positively to start with. Right? It's new. I, I don't get it. Um, when kids have 12 different social media platforms. I judge that as negative. And shows me how good it, it can be. And so uh, I think about that. I get some feedback again that our restorative work um, 
misunderstandings may be too flexible, too inconsistent, or, or the worst of them yet, um, there's no consequences. And what that really translates to is no consequences that we relate to from our days at high school. Um, I look at every other area of how we do high school, and I'm glad that it's not the same high school that, that I attend. Um, I'm glad that we make some of those advances. Um, the two of the survey questions, our students were asked this question, our school has a clear set of rules and expectations. Um, and so trying to think how students see this, how they perceive it, um, they got the choices of strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. So in essence, two of the answers positive, um, two of the answers may be negative. So our school has a clear set of rules and expectations. Uh, and given that this survey last year, 97% of our students either agreed or said strongly agreed. Um, and I don't know what exactly I was expecting from that staff, but I, I don't know if it's realistic um, to have more than 97% of our students feel like very clear they know uh, what the rules are and what's expected. Um, and the second one we pulled in talking about this was teachers and administrators consistently enforce the rules of school. Same categories, right? Strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. Uh, and this one came in right at about 90% of strongly agree uh, or agree. And again, I have three of my own children. If I gave them that survey at home and dad enforces rules consistently, I would never get to 90% of uh, my three <laughs> surveyed at home. So uh, we know that kids don't always feel that way. So <coughs> we look at data, and again, it's, it's one piece of data on one, on one given day. We do have a survey of our own that aligns plenty of that, but, but in, the, in some of the misconceptions, I like to point out that, that when we ask the kids, they, they do know what those things are um, and how it applies. Um, and our third area is staff self-care. Um, certainly a, a new area to spend some time focusing on. We partnered with Tina Bogren. Um, she's an author and speaker. We've had two Zoom sessions so far. Um, she's written a, a book that we we are studying right now, it's 180 days of self-care. Uh, she has another one with Tim Kainel who just, just came out. Um, again, taking care of, of the individual so we can take take care of others. Um, I was walking in with, with Dr. Owen. The wall has a 30-day challenge on it. That was an item that came from her to our staff. Our staff passed it on to our students. So uh, picking a healthy habit and, and targeting 30 days uh, of improvement uh, in your life. Uh, last couple of years, we've, we've done a lot of work with, with trauma and with anxiety um, within our students. Uh, a couple of book studies, Fostering Resilient Learners, and then Relationship, Responsibility, and Regulation. Um, and this year added that same component because our, our adults in our building, um, they have the same trauma, the same anxiety experiences. Um, you know, the last year, and we talk about this probably too often, but I, I know coming into this year, I, I had that false sense that this year was going to be um, a piece of cake compared to last year. We weren't worried about uh, mandates. We weren't worried about uh, contact tracing in the same ways. And it seemed like some of that cloud uh, had lifted. But I think what we found across the board, every administrator I talked to in other districts, um, we kind of have a pandemic following the pandemic. Um, Mr. Carter talked earlier about some lost learning, some kids not in, in schools. And those are coming back in, uh, but, but anxiety is at a, a different level. And I thought it was going to be normal. My reality is 450 teenagers is not ever normal. Um, but we've come back in, in in a different place in our lives. And our kids, I think sometimes they take a bad bad rap. You know, we've probably all said it. We've all heard it. Kids these days, uh, I, a lot of times, I think our kids reflect society. Um, we just get to see it firsthand. So. We're working through some of those behaviors, and behaviors aren't always a, a negative. Um, last thing on, on anxiety, um, some research done during closure time. Um, the number one item that reduces anxiety is predictability. And if you look at the last 18 months in our country, predictability is not the word that anybody's used for a while. Um, so we, we continually battle that. Again, our staff are in those same, those same elements. No, we have to devote that. We want our staff to be the best version of themselves. Um, the best summary I could use, and I, I hear this a lot now in the circles I'm in, um, the flight attendant gives that message when you 
board the airplane, you're sitting there, you're waiting. They talk about if the cabin loses pressure, oxygen masks will deploy. And their next message is put your own on first before you put anybody else's on. And so I feel very good about taking a chunk of our time um, for that with our staff. I believe if there were a plane of, of you know, in trouble, the educators would save a lot of other people on the plane. I'm not so sure how many of them would save themselves. So, so it's really good um, for our staff to be focused on Sundowly. And probably the last reality back where I started, um, I know that when we have a day of in-service, we just place about 1,500 kids um, into our community, into our homes. And, and we, don't, we don't take that lightly. Um, I feel very blessed that we have those days. Always take more, more training and more learning um, with our staff. But I think those three right now um, certainly providing us with a great impact um, so that we can serve the students that we do every day. Questions about those three initiatives that we're working on this year? I think you've talked about it pretty in depth. That's <laughs> we appreciate that, but okay. same as you said, I've, I've heard nothing but positive about the full day professional developments yeah. and every building that I've been in, so not only high school, so it seems like it has been a positive step for us. We followed up with some surveys a little different, maybe yeah. across the district, and I know our high school one each I've shared some of that data with you guys in, in some of the memos. Uh, uh, so we want to know. We, we, we change things. We want to know, uh, is it working? And uh, um, initial, initial thoughts from our staff, it's working. It's working really well. And uh, it's making a difference for our, for our staff, which makes a difference for our kids. So, Anything else for Jared? Well, thank you, Jared. Thanks for taking your time tonight to Absolutely. come out and talk with us. We you appreciate guys. it. So. Um, we're, we've had a great start to the meeting, I think. We've had a lot of great uh, communications to the board with everything going on. Now we get to kind of move into what we do, just go through our, our business. So we'll start with the uh, SBRC application. Yeah, the, this application allows us to see receive one-time funding budget adjustments uh, for like certified enrollment in increases and also open enrollment out. Um, so what we're doing here is requesting spending authority. You know, so for example, you know, our, our enrollment this October is more than last year, you know, but we don't have that money. So we can request um, that authority from the SBRC. Same thing if we had um, more kids open enroll out, we could request that authority. We don't have that, so that doesn't, that doesn't uh, appear. So the maximum amount we can request for our enrollment increase is authority of 123,000. Um, we don't have a, anything that we can request for open enrollment out discrepancy. And then our ELL funding of 3,000. So uh, this is something we typically do in November. Where these numbers lie is always different. If you don't have an uh, enrollment increase, you don't have anything here. Last year we had more in the open enrollment out. So, uh, but this allows us the spending authority uh, in the year for those, those dollars standard practice annual standard practice exactly right Jay just uh, need a motion then to approve the SBRC application so moved thank you Andrew do we have a second second okay. Gloria we have a motion and a second any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries modification to our cafeteria plan yeah th this is uh, our cafeteria plan may allow up to 5,000 of unused amounts in a participant's uh, health um, FSA, their flex spending account at the end of the year to be carried over to pay uh, to reimburse you know, medical care expenses um, that occurred in the, the, the following year. This, this is an IRS plan change that isn't our current practice. Uh, previously, you couldn't carry that money over. So with that IRS change, we just need to modify our plan to allow our people to do that. Is it 500 or 5,000? 500. 500. Okay. I make a motion to modify our cafeteria plan. That's a 
Good idea. Yeah. Second. We have a motion by Andrea, second by Jay. Was all right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The motion carries. Looks like we are looking at another on state trip later on. Yeah, this, I, I like the itinerary in your um, yes. in your packet. The uh, the band and choir are taking a joint trip to Chicago, Illinois. Um, they'll engage in highlights uh, that, that Chicago can provide, including a, a show. They go and have deep di dish pizza, different cultural events. Uh, the out-of-state trip is from April 28th to May 1st. Uh, the travel accommodations are being arranged with Bob Rogers Travel, who is uh, someone we've used many times before to schedule some of these trips. So this is a um, not a final, but a draft itinerary for our kids, um, and we'll, we would need a motion to approve the out-of-state trip. So moved. All right. We have Todd, motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thanks, Andrea. We have a motion and a second to approve the out-of-state trip to Chicago for the band and chorus. I like the fact that they also get to kind of work with uh, the college there. The yeah, band, right. Chorus, both. Sure. Oh my God. I think that's yeah. the key part of the trip. I mean, I know the cultural part, yeah. but it is a performing organization. Yeah. And to receive excellent help from another professional, yeah, very much worthwhile. It's a great exposure. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. A girls basketball fundraiser. Another fundraiser, uh, we had one last month, um, different group. The high school girls basketball team is requesting to sell gourmet popcorn. They'll use the proceeds for equipment, training needs. Um, they, they didn't have any, any dollars in their, um, their account. Uh, so these will be used towards the entire girls basketball program, 7th through 12th. Not just high school, but 7th through 12th. Are all fundraisers approved through the board? Uh, depends on the amount. Um, over uh, 2,500 are approved by the board. So they estimate that it's going to yep. be larger than that. I was yep. surprised by how much they believe they're going to gourmet popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they, they make those estimates based on uh, they got 45 students, how yeah. many they hope that each sell. Um, so it, it certainly is an estimate of the yeah. proceeds. All right. Do we have a motion to approve? The so moved. Uh, thank you, Jay. Do you have a second? I will second that motion. All right. Thanks, Tom. We have a motion to second to approve the girls' basketball fundraiser. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to the AEA board election. Our school district uh, needs to cast a ballot for our representation on the Prairie Lakes AEA board. Uh, there is only one candidate who has uh, filled the statement of candidacy by October 15th, and that is uh, Sue Brown, the, incumb the incumbent. Um, and she, again, you know, is running again. So we just need a motion um, to fill out the ballot for Mrs. Sue Brown. Absolutely. Yeah, worked with her for many years. Uh, she retired special education teacher um, from the community. Wonderful person to represent us on the AAA board. All right, do we have a motion then to uh, approve Sue or a motion to have Sue? Put Sue Brown on the ballot for us. I will make a motion to approve Sue Brown for the AEA board election. Thank you, Tom. Do we have a second? Second. Thanks, Gloria. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Extend the whole grade sharing. The whole grade sharing agreement that we currently have with Laverne is ex is uh, will expire at the end of this school year. Uh, so what we would like to do is just simply change what's in red on this uh, to include the 2022 and the 2023 uh, school year um, and then to terminate on June 30th, 2023. Uh, the financial agreement for the additional year will stay the same as it currently is, which is us receiving 75% of the funding for the 6th through 12th grade students from Laverne who come to the Al Algona school. Is that 75%, is that pretty typical, or is that kind of something negotiated between the two districts? Uh, it, both. It is, it's pretty typical that you arrive there. We didn't start at 75%, which is also typical. You build up to it. Um, and then, you know, yes, very, very typical. 
How many students is that? Um, that was on that. Uh, whole grade share in is 50 is 50 this year 52 last year okay. all right any further discussion so moved okay Jay. we got a motion to approve uh, extend the whole grade share you have a second i'll second okay. thank you todd we got a motion and second any further discussion <coughs> hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed the motion carries Approve the three-year Ahira inspection contract, or maybe they yep. a different way. No, that, that that's correct. And what this is is our um, proposal to perform our asbestos reinspection services for our district. That's something that we have to have done. Um, the district has uh, operated under a three-year contract in the past. Uh, there, re these inspections are required by the EPA. Um, and this company has done this for us in the past. So this is a three-year contract in the amount of $11,300. I do recommend this proposal. All right. Need a motion for approval. I make a motion to approve that proposal. Thanks, Andrew. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thanks, Todd. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. We're looking to approve a platform and a lift gate for a utility truck. We currently have a 1977 Chevrolet truck that we use as our utility truck with the, um, it's got racks and flatbed on the back uh, that I am told we purchased new in 1977. So we have got our money's worth out of that truck. Um, it, it's wore out. Uh, we we continue to have to put money into that, which that's just not feasible to continue to repair and use it. Um, we do need that type of vehicle. Um, it's used frequently by our outdoor crew to, to haul things. Um, it also has a lift on it, which we, we need. Um, what we would like to do is purchase an aluminum platform and a lift gate to be installed on one of our current trucks, one of our older trucks, uh, to just uh, take, the need, take the place of the one that we currently have. Um, this purchase would be out of PEPL expenses. Um, our total purchase is I think it's 13 around 13,000 between the two also part of that is a is a spreader um, that we would use to spread uh, sand, salt and sand um, at the back of back of that truck did we just approve to buy a new, to replace the 77 a few months ago was that a totally different different no different. We, we aren't we aren't replacing it we're taking one of the current trucks we have and just, and just putting new equipment on that yep okay. to fill the need uh, I know we will not be keeping the truck. I don't think it's running right now. It, it's day to day. Yeah. It blocks the gate for the football games. And the floorboard's not completely there anywhere, so it's going to be the time of year where you don't you don't want to use it. I make a motion to approve the purchase of platform and lift gate. And spreader. Yep. All right. Thanks. Todd. Do we have a second? Second the motion. All right, thanks, Tom. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, open enrollment. Uh, we have um, five students open enrolling. The uh, first one is from the North Union District to Algona. Um, and then we have four siblings who lived in the Emmitsburg District and moved out of the district but wants to continue to um, attend school in the district so that's one of those that we we do have to approve so I do recommend all five of these applications so moved thanks Jay do we have a second second thanks Andrew motion and a second for the open enrollment request any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries new contracts new contracts we have uh, uh, Sandra, Sandra Verhelst and food service. This would be at the high school, 20 hours a week, uh, $11 per hour. Diana Burbach, food service at Lucia Wallace. That'd be full time, 35 five hours per, per week at the same rate. Becky Bibbler, if you remember, uh, we had a special education teacher at the elementary take a uh, administrative job in another district at the end of the summer, and we didn't, we weren't able to fill that. So we've been operating without that that teacher and we we have it posted to hire um, but Becky Bibbler is 
uh, willing to come in three hours a day uh, to help us with some of that need. Uh, also, Dana Carroll, teacher associate at the middle school. Uh, Chris Kaler is a high school custodian who works for us currently. Uh, he's been working 27, 28 hours. Uh, we are moving one of our full-time high school custodians who's at um, 40 hours plus overtime, 45 hours down to 30. So we have 15 hours there that we, we need to cover. Like to move Chris up to 40 hours to cover that, which would make him full full time. We're still looking at to hire one more. Yeah, yeah, and we still have an opening. We still have, we still opening. have an opening from a resignation last month or the month before. Can I make a motion to approve all new contracts. All right. Thanks, Andrea. Do we have a second? Thanks, Corey. A motion and a second to approve the new contracts. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations. Resignations this month we have uh, Tina Jones from Food Service, uh, Michelle Parsons uh, from Food Service, um, Melissa Berkey from Assistant Volleyball Pending Suitable Replacement, uh, Re Rebecca West from Color Guard, uh, Caden Wally. Wadley from assistant football pending suitable replacement and Heidi Schnackenberg from teacher associate in the middle school. So moved. Jay, do we have a second? Second the motion. And then, you, John, we have a motion and a second to approve the resignations and further discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, next we need is a motion for adjournment. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. We are adjourned.